once again. Cathar Unconditional Love 26. Cathar. Cathar Emotional Joy. I say that because how many books are there telling us how to be happy? The secret of happiness. But in actual fact, uh, like jealousy, angry, uh, being angry, uh, happiness is an emotion and it's somewhat difficult to be uh, uh, envious all the time, angry all the time, although we all know one or two people that are doing a, a reasonable job about it. And because they're emotions and happiness is an emotion. But what we can have, what we can develop is an, an inner emotional joy or bliss and that comes mainly about through understanding knowledge but more importantly understanding and knowledge of ourselves which comes from looking at ourselves from an inner point of view not someone's not one of our friends uh, remarks to us it's what we need to discover for ourselves the uh, This Katha uh, Perfecti and uh, was asked a question: What are the two greatest goods? The two greatest goods. I thought about that and I thought, oh well, love, uh, well, compassion, charity, kindness, love. These are things that came into my mind. Uh, being thankful and. Uh, from the Cathar point of view, the two greatest goods is gratitude for existence, this is according to Henri de Nabour, and the absolute acceptance of necessity. Now, gratitude for existence, uh, that's not too difficult to uh, understand. Uh, what's his name? Uh, William Blake, the, the English mystic of some, say, English Gnostic, he was asked, can you explain happiness? Or, and he said, yes, I can. And in one word, he said, gratitude. And when you think about it, it's very hard to be thankful for something and be unhappy at the same time. So if someone gives you a gift and you're, oh, gee, that's really nice, it's somewhat difficult to be unhappy or sad. So, this is in keeping with the Cathar point of view, gratitude for existence, which means not just this lifetime, it means previous lifetimes and our lifetimes to come. Because of reincarnation, of course. The other one, the absolute acceptance of necessity. Well, when I first heard that, I can't, must admit, I, <laughs> what's, what's this? But in actual fact, what it is, is that it means that whatever, whatever has happened in this lifetime, <laughs> we've done a bit of killing, I was a soldier, so I <clears throat> maybe we've stolen, but we've, we've done all these things, we've done good things, we've done things that are not very nice. Now, religions can say, this is good, this is bad, this is a sin, and, but I don't like this thing of sin, because by being a sinner, Automatically, automatically tends to mean that if you sin, therefore you're guilty and therefore there must be some punishment involved. I, I feel we do things and we do things, we make mistakes. We do things which we, on hindsight we wouldn't have done, we shouldn't have done and uh, so I think this is, this is part of living. We're living and learning and we do sometimes stupid things, silly things and we make a mistake rather than this business of sinning. <clears throat> I mean, uh, some things that people do are plain evil, we know that. That goes without saying. But this absolute acceptance of necessity is that you accept whatever it is, good, bad and indifferent, that has happened in your life and in previous lifetimes, because they were all necessary to get you to this point of existence right here and now, just now, this present. 
if you can think about something that happened a week ago, two weeks ago, two years ago, five years ago, 20 years ago, that was hurtful, that hurt you, or maybe you hurt somebody else. And you can think about that, and, it, and you can think about it, and it doesn't raise any negative feelings and emotions, then you've accepted it. If, when thinking about that, you still get upset, you still get angry, you still get uptight, then you haven't totally accepted that. And whatever's happened, you need to forgive or forget or whatever it is that you need to do to get rid of it out of your, your consciousness, your psyche, your inner self. So, the situation, why it is one of the two of the, of the greatest goods, is because if you can, uh, if you can accept this, which means that you can talk about it, think about it, and it's not upsetting you, it means this is giving you uh, peace of mind and tranquility of soul. If, on the other hand, you think about that and it creates inner pain, inner turmoil, inner anguish, and, and, and you don't get rid of it, then one day, somehow, and in some way, it will manifest itself as pain or worse. <clears throat> so it's to our advantage to get rid of it. So this is why it's, it's one of the greatest goods, because if, if we can accept that, the total, ac the total uh, acceptance of necessity, that this gives us an inner emotional joy or peace. There were these two uh, young Buddhist monks and they were walking along and uh, they were quite devout, very seriously about their being a monk. And they came to a stream and there was this young lady, a very attractive young lady, who uh, was, it was just too deep for her, of course, to get across the stream, walk across the stream. So one of the monks said, look, do you want me to, I'll, I'll carry you across the stream. Oh, she said, well, thank you very much. So he bent down, she, he got her on her, his shoulders, strong, and he just carried her across the stream and he put her down. And uh, so she didn't have to take off her shoes and stockings or whatever and didn't get her dress wet and wet. So they walked along and about 15, 20 minutes later, the other monk says, that was totally disgusting what you did. You actually physically was involved with a woman. You picked up that woman, put her on your shoulders and carried her across the stream. And the other monk says, yes, I did that, but I put her down and that's it. You're the one who've been carrying her for the last 20 minutes. You're the one who hasn't got rid of her. I carried her across, I put her down, it's finished. You're the one who hasn't got rid of it. Okay. Possibly never happened. Doesn't matter, but there's a point to it. So, the two greatest goods is gratitude from the Cathar point of view. Uh, Gratitude for existence, okay, I think that's great uh, for anybody and everybody. And the absolute acceptance of necessity, <laughs> forget cathars, that's also good for anybody to totally accept and know you can accept what's happened. <clears throat> From a reincarnation point of view, reincarnation allows us to take control in this respect. It is said what they say, and I, which I agree, that all our lifetimes were also necessary. And all those things that happened in our lifetimes, us killing, us being killed, us giving pain, us receiving pain, all these things, us giving joy, us re receiving joy, all these things were necessary in those lifetimes to get us to this lifetime. So the situation is, if by doing that to get to this lifetime, if we have now, in this present, in this now, <clears throat> with our understanding, by how we live this life, is now giving us control of, if not future lives, certainly the next life. In this way, 
we can take control, we can take personal responsibility. Although, there was this uh, couple, and an Aussie couple, and uh, out in the country, and the property, and the husband was ill and he, he's dying, and his wife said, look, please, just let me know what's going on. I just need to know when you die, what's going on, what's going on. He said, okay, if I can, I will. Anyway, he died, and a few days later, she was sitting down and just quiet, and suddenly there was her husband's voice. He said, Mary, Mary, Mary. And she said, oh, John, where, where are you? Uh, he said, oh, everything's fine. He said, everything's fine. And she said, what are you doing? Oh, he said, he said, Mary, over here, it's sex, 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 sex in the morning, sex at lunch, sex in the evening. Oh, she said, I never thought heaven was, was, was such a physical, sexual place. No, 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 Mary said, I'm out in the paddock, I'm out in the field. He said, I'm a rabbit. <laughs> okay, joke, of course. But it's to bring back the point that in some uh, philosophies and religions to do with the philo of reincarnation, there's this, uh, that if you live uh, as a lesser person, or as an animal, you'll come back as an animal, or a bug, or this and that. Uh, well, from a Cathar point of view, a Gnostic point of view, we are forever evolving. Maybe we, in this particular lifetime, or a particular lifetime, we don't involve much, we might even take a step or two backwards, but we are forever evolving. We never ever revert back to an animal uh, existence. <coughs> Uh, just a note to finish on, there's book after book advising us, telling us to live in the now, to live in the present. That's great, uh, fine. But the plain fact is, whether you're aware of it, whether you're told, whether you understand, comprehend, everybody is in the moment. That's all we have, that's all we'll ever have. We are forever in this moment of time, this conscious moment of time. The situation is, it's not that we need to live in this moment, the plain fact is we are in the moment. That's all we have, and that's all we will ever have. The, the thing is that people don't realize this, understand this, or comprehend this. I say this because if we can live in the moment and then by living in the moment, maximize it, uh, make the most of it. I'm chatting, we're listening, we make the most of it. We give it 100%, if we can. But the situation is with so many of us, and again, we're not monks, we're not saints, we're so much, again, with this emotional happiness, yeah, it's things that happened in the past, weeks ago, months ago, years ago, we can't let go of it, we can't release it. Uh, I'm talking about negative things. But even joyful things, that's, that's gone. But we spend a tremendous amount of time, so many of us, in the past. In the past rather than the present. And then we have the future. What is going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen in a week? What's going to happen in a couple of years? What's going to happen to this? What's going to happen to the country? And we're for so much in the future. So in actual fact, for so, for so many of us, so much of the time, we're here and there, but we're never all there at a time. Uh, so much of our energy is in the past and in the future, and so consequently, we don't have much energy uh, for the moment. 10, 20, 30, 40 percent. Our minds are over here and our minds are over there. Our consciousness is divided between this and this. But the plain fact is, all this takes energy and it's also a form of fatigue. So the point is, the more we can live in the moment, the more we can live in, within this present, uh, it's also a way of energising us. Bye for now. See you next time.